Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. National Financial Literacy Month is celebrated in April, which is a great opportunity for us to check and promote our financial situation and skills. Joining us for the segment, we have Chloe Wolforth. She's the Managing Director, Angelus Wealth Management, to discuss empowering women throughout their financial journeys. Chloe, it's great to have you with us. Welcome to Trade Talks. Hi, Jill. Thanks so much. It's great to be here. You got it. And we're in the full swing of Financial Literacy Month. What does this month mean to you? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's great to see an uptick in financial literacy across all these different platforms. Um, to me, financial literacy really means, you know, your the foundation of your relationship with money. And um, to see topics, you know, being talked about um, that sort of pique your interest and, and have you think about your relationship with money and how, you know, you could strengthen that um, I, is actually what motivated me to, to get into this line of work, but also what motivates me daily working with clients. As a financial advisor, our job is really to make sure that our clients um, feel well informed and have all the information that they need to make the most effective financial decisions they can. And so having this month dedicated to financial literacy, I think is just a great, um, a great thing. And also to see it sort of in sound bites across all different platforms, I think just makes it more accessible to all different people, depending on, you know, what stage they are in life. Right. And I've read about your passion toward helping women throughout their financial journeys. Why are you so passionate about why women should invest? Well, I mean, I like, I, I definitely am passionate about all people's journeys, but I think I work with um, a number of females and I find it extremely rewarding um, because, you know, ultimately women wear a lot of different hats and you, you definitely, um, you know, having a financial advisor certainly helps streamline so many of the different things that may come up for you, whether it's starting a career or making a career change, um, starting a family, um, you know, working with divorcees, going through marriage, um, all these different things that women face. Um, and ultimately, you know, historically might have been in the male's hands. We see a lot of shift towards females sort of taking more control. And so I have, um, you know, the great pleasure of working with a lot of female clients. Of course, me personally being a female, um, you know, I, um, I feel that my education and my, um, my background in this space sort of helps in terms of making these deeper connections with, with female clients. How should women take control of their financial lives and what are your tips for women who want to be more hands-on with their finances? Um, I get this question quite a bit. I'd say, you know, the first thing is really to find an advisor that you trust. The next question is really, well, how do I find someone, especially, you know, if they're not necessarily, um, I'm currently in the New York area, so if they're, you know, nationwide. Um, and really the answer I think is ask your the people that you trust in your life. Oftentimes they have someone that they know um, in the space, um, but really, you know, ultimately the goal is to feel comfortable with your finances. And that doesn't mean you have to suddenly become you know, totally ingrained in the investment process or some sort of financial planning scheme. It's more that you're finding someone that you can trust to be a partner um, and help you sort of throughout the entire journey. And I understand at Angelus that you're helping clients meet their charitable goals. It's a big component of your work. What are some common challenges when it comes to strategic philanthropy? Well, um, interestingly, philanthropy comes up quite a bit. Um, funny enough, some people dismiss themselves as being um, charitably inclined. And in fact, when you look under the hood, they actually very much are. And um, people give quite a bit away to charity. It's a big part of sort of holistic um, management that we do for families. And, um, um, you know, money is definitely something that's emotional. Philanthropy is also emotional because you're thinking about organizations you want to commit to, to give your money away. And so that's a huge part of sort of the planning that we do. Of course, there's different tax related issues um, and benefits that come with philanthropy. So um, it's, it's certainly something that we focus on and there are tons of different ways to go about it. Um, you know, whether it's a donor advice fund or a family foundation, um, lots of different trust vehicles. 
So it's definitely a conversation that we, we tend to have and something that we play, pay close attention to. What's your advice for individuals and families who want to get more involved in philanthropy? I would say just to start talking about it now. Um, as I mentioned, you know, it's, a, it's an emotional process in many ways. And um, oftentimes the a generation, the first generation might think differently than the second generation about what organizations they wanna to commit to and how they want their legacy to be carried on. And so while, you know, conversations about money can sometimes be uncomfortable, um, I, I see that philanthropic conversations actually in many ways unite a family and create um, sort of a value system that might already be in place, um, but philanthropy happens to, um, and a, a philanthropic strategy happens to solidify that for them as a family. And Chloe, to wrap up here, how can people learn more about Angelus? Oh, sure. Um, you can go to angelusinvestments.com. Um, that's our website, and it will take you through all the different things that we do for our clients. All right, Chloe, we appreciate the insight. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Thank you, Jill.